the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. And the brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us now call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, have made all those reborn in Christ a chosen race and a royal priesthood. Grant us, we pray, the grace to will and do what is what you command, that the people called to eternal life may be one in the faith of their hearts and the homage of their deeds. For the Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I will take the children of Israel from among the nations to which they have come and gather them from all sides to bring them back to their land. I will make them one nation upon the land in the mountains of Israel, and there shall be one prince for them all. Never again shall they be two nations, and never again shall they be divided into two kingdoms. No longer shall they defile themselves with their idols, their abominations, and all their transgressions. I will deliver them from all their sins of apostasy, and cleanse them so that they may be my people, and I may be their God. My servant David shall be prince over them, and there shall be one shepherd for them all. They shall live by my statutes and carefully observe my decrees. They shall live on the land that I gave to my servant Jacob, the land where their fathers lived. They shall live on it forever, they and their children and their children's children, with my servant David, their prince forever. I will make with them a covenant of peace. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them, and I will multiply them and put my sanctuary among them forever. My dwelling shall be with them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Thus the nations shall know that it is I, the Lord, who make Israel holy, when my sanctuary shall be set up among them forever. The word of the Lord. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations. Proclaim it on distant isles and say, He who scattered Israel now gathers them together. He guards them as a shepherd his flock. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. The Lord shall ransom Jacob. He shall redeem him from the hand of his conqueror. Shouting, they shall mount the heights of Zion. They shall come streaming to the Lord's blessings, the grain, the wine, and the oil, the sheep, and the oxen, the Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. Then the virgins shall make merry and dance, and young men and old as well. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will console and gladden them after their sorrows. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Of glory. Cast away from you all the crimes you have committed, says the Lord, and make for yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. Many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what Jesus had done began to believe in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. So the chief priests and the Pharisees convened the Sanhedrin and said, What are we going to do? This man is performing many signs. If we leave him alone, all will believe in him. 
and the Romans will come and take away both our land and our nation. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was a high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing, nor do you consider that it is better for you that one man should die instead of the people, so that the whole nation may not perish. He did not say this on his own, but since he was high priest for that year, he prophesied that Jesus was going to die for the nation, not only for the nation, but also to gather into one, into one the dispersed children of God. So from that day on, they planned to kill him. So Jesus no longer walked about in public among the Jews, but he left for the, for the region near the desert to a town called Ephraim, and there he remained with his disciples. Now the Passover of the Jews was near, and many went up from the country to Jerusalem before Passover to purify themselves. They looked for Jesus and said to one another, as they were in the temple area, What do you think? That he will not come to the feast. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's Gospel is an important gospel as we enter Holy Week because it kind of um, gives the context, it kind of sets the stage for what we will be celebrating the next uh, few days. Jesus was becoming more and more popular because of the signs. Remember, there were no social media back then, no Facebook, no Twitter, no Instagram. And, you know, it was simply by word of mouth. And so uh, in the area where Jesus was performing all the signs, where he was preaching in the synagogues, people were beginning to be attracted to him and to his teachings and to his message. The gospel today um, is part of that narrative where Jesus raised Lazarus back to life. So the, one of the signs... Here is Jesus who raised a dead person back to life. And so because of this and many other signs that he performed, more and more people were being attracted to him and to his teachings. Now, normally, you know, um, when good things happen, um, it's usually something that is joyful and we usually rejoice. But it's not always the case. You know, when some good things happen, and when people do good things, um, sometimes people are not happy. And it happened to Jesus. That in spite of all the good that he did, all the signs, all the miracles that he performed, some people were happy, but there, were, there was a few who were not. So the gospel today says, they gathered together and said, what are we going to do with this man? He is attracting more and more people. Not good. Okay, he performed sign. He raised a dead person back to life. We don't care. We don't like him. He has to go. Jesus met resistance from the more religious. In other words, from people who were who thought they were very religious, who thought they believed in God. Because the simple, ordinary people kept following him and you know, this must be the real one. But the priests of the temple, the religious leaders of the people during that time, they were the ones who resisted, who rejected the Lord. So we always say, you know, the fake religious are always the most self-righteous and the most judgmental. Those who feel that they are holier than others, they are really the ones who really say, you know, those people who don't go to church, oh, they are bad people. I come to church, you know, every Sunday, I'm the bad one. I'm the good one. All the others, I don't think so. Well, sometimes we do that. You know, when we see people who don't pray, who don't, uh, it's easier to say we are better because we pray. That's exactly what happened to the Pharisees. They thought they were the holy ones. They were the, the only good ones. And so it was easy for them to judge others as not good enough. So now Jesus is here. And there's one thing that uh, is important in what uh, Caiaphas, the high priest, said. They said it, it sets the tone for the next few days. When Caiaphas kind of prophesied, when the Pharisees said, 
this is very troubling. This is very, you know, unsettling. If people will continue to follow him and believe in him, Rome, by the time Jerusalem was under the Roman Empire, he said, the Romans might come and invade us because, you know, uh, they are following this man who claims to be king. Because Christ was talking about the kingdom, the kingdom. You know, they did not understand what this kingdom was. They thought it was a human earthly kingdom. Of course, we know that Christ was talking about the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven. But people were following him. And so the Pharisees said, oh, if the Romans will hear about this man talking about himself as a king and about a kingdom, they might invade us and just defeat us and take away our land. That's why Caiaphas said, oh, it's better for that man to die than for our land to be taken over by the Romans. Better for one man to die than to save the whole nation. A very important prophecy because we know that as St. John would say in, in, in the gospel today, the death of Jesus not only saved Jerusalem and Israel as a nation, but the death of Jesus saved the whole of humanity. The death of one man saved the whole of humanity. A prophecy is very important because in the first reading we talk about one day the whole of humanity will be shepherded by one shepherd. We will all be one nation, one people, under one, under one shepherd. So this Holy Week, that's what we celebrate. The dying of Christ, not a useless death, but the dying in order to give life for us. That his death on the cross was a self-offering for us. We could have been punished because of our sins, but he took our sins. He took that penalty for us. And by dying on the cross, he gave life for all of us. So today that is what, what we pray as we enter into, into Holy Week. You know, um, a very important challenge for all of us when we talk about our, our faith, our life as, as Christians. You know, don't be afraid of being rejected, being misunderstood. Uh, when, if Christ had been um, intimidated by the rejection of the people, he could have said, well, that's it. You know, um, Father, I'm going back. I'm going back to heaven. You know, these people are ungrateful. They don't like me. They reject me. That's it. But he didn't. Because had he stopped, he would still be, you know, lurking in darkness. And so I think it's also an important challenge for all of us. Let us not be afraid to be rejected, to be misunderstood. Um, uh, this world is not all about, you know, when we talk about social media, you know, the likes, the likes, you like, you keep on pressing the like, the like, you know, the, the more number of likes, the better. Um, Christian life is not all about being liked. Christian life is really about just following the Lord. And the consequence of following the Lord uh, sometimes is being misunderstood, being disliked. Because remember, the values that we stand for are sometimes contrary to the values of the world. Forgiveness. It's contrary to the values of the world. When it's always like revenge. You know, our generosity, kindness. It's contrary sometimes to the values of the world of getting more and acquiring more. Humility, kindness. So it's, it's, not, it's not easy to keep living these values because we can be misunderstood, we can be rejected. But we keep praying so that as we enter into Holy Week, um, may the Lord continue to grant us that grace to live our Christian life, to make ourselves visible, not to be admired, not to be applauded, but to be visible in order to be a real light to others. Christian life is Christian witnessing. It's not about, you know, being the most popular campus personality. It's about following the Lord in our values. It's about bringing light to those in darkness. We now bring our prayers to the Lord who safeguards us. We pray for the church. May the Lord bless her with an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we pray for the leaders of nations. May God envelop them in his care and allow peace to flourish throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we pray for all who struggle endlessly to find healing. May God have compassion on them and give them strength in their ordeal. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we pray for those in this assembly, for all of us, preparing to receive the sacraments of initiation. May the grace of the Holy Spirit fill their hearts with abundant blessings. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we pray for all who have died. May they come to enjoy eternal life in heaven and behold the face of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our and today we pray in a very special way in thanksgiving for healing of Resti Maliare and for Faustino Somoza II for whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our and for all of us gathered today, for ourselves, for those who ask for prayers, to whom we promise to pray for, can we pray for those who are ill, especially those who are in great physical pain, uh, those who are in um, agony and spiritual agony also because of their illness. We pray that the Lord would restore them to full health, sustain them in their, in their illness. Safety and protection of our families and their loved ones. And for all the intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus. Merciful <clears throat> God, hear and answer our prayers in the grace of your divine providence. We ask this through Christ, O Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands, it will become for us a bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, through the divine work of human hands, it will become a spiritual drink. Blessed Blessed God. God. Let us now pray that my sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to God Almighty Father. May the Lord accept your sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, our good and good of all the Church. May the gifts we offer from our fasting be acceptable to you, O Lord, we pray, and as an expiation for our sins, they may make us worthy of your grace and lead us to what you promise for eternity, through Christ, O Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, a duty in our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we precious, without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord, Lord, Lord God, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son, in the highest, blessed is he who comes to the name of Lord, O Son, in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the foundable holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the true fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and confess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you impel us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullest of charity, together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints that please to you throughout the ages, we merit to be co-heirs of eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 <clears throat> At a Savior's command and form of divine teachings, we now dare to say, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take the away the sins of the world. Have Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never Amen. permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty, most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Saint Michael, the Lord, 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 be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God forgive him we have to pray. And do thou prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits that prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection before the help or sought the intercession was left an aid. Inspire his confidence, defying to thee, O Virgin of Virgins, O Mother, to thee to be calm before thee will stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother, the word incarnate, despise not the petitions, but in your mercy, the gifts of them. Amen. Our Lady of Lords, palms will be, uh, they are selling palms outside by the vestibule uh, after Mass. So those who are you know, interested, I think they are. It's not buy one, take one, but yeah. <laughs> they're selling pounds outside. How beautiful they are.